Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Codenamed Podcast, Codenamed Epic's weekly podcast. I'm the R-Man, and today in the bunker we have... Dismal Elephant. Kirby Kid. Mr. Fitch. And the subjects of discussion today, Netflix just realized they done goofed, and they decided to bring the two services back together. Hallelujah. Then we're going to be talking about the PS3 Michael ad, which uh, has people talking everywhere. And then the exit question for the week is, what of the myriad of games coming out before the end of the year are you looking most forward to? So, let's take it away, Mr. Fish. All right. I'm a, I, you could say I'm relatively new to Netflix. I started probably two, three months ago, and I'm like, oh, this is really cool. I want to see this movie. It's not on instant stream. I can get it for DVD. But not anymore. You know, like millions of people, I got that email that said, Sorry, we messed up, but we're going to split the services. Now, that has me pissed off. Just, I don't want to pay more for something they already promised to me. I think it pisses you know? a lot of people yeah, off. Yeah, Netflix. It's, it's like, what are you thinking? Well, you know, someone won, sense. though. Blockbuster won. They're Bl- back up and running. Some, oh, yeah. some of them have been actually reopened. Like, I've seen two stores already that have reopened. Y- yeah, which, I mean, I was I used Blockbuster for, for my service. I should probably get Netflix. It just... It, it it was such a, it, yeah. such, it was such an appealing service to me and and I I was kind of late to the Netflix game and then oh. I found out that they wanted to split. What were they thinking? I've been on Netflix since two thousand seven two thousand eight so for a few years now and I I've been a fairly dedicated watcher because I I, I don't want I don't have the time a lot of times to go to Blockbuster and make sure to drop off a video or a video game before its due dates because I don't want to pay all that extra money fees because. If you forget it for a couple of days or whatever the case may be, you almost might as well just buy the thing off of them. Well, you know, they, they now have um, this thing, it's called the Combo Pass. You can rent any TV series, um, movie, or game for however long you want with no, you know, no fees or whatever. You can swap it in. You know, I was able to get, you know, Gears of War, come back, get Rage. You know, like big titles the day they come out. You know, but they used they had that once before with video games, and I had that, and it was great because mm-hmm. I could go get a video game, I'll play the heck out of it for a few days, get tired of it, return it, things like that, and I'll be able to get a new video game. But then they stopped doing that, and if I get into them doing this, I'm just thinking it's only going to be a matter of time until they stop it, like how they did before, mm-hmm. and then I'll just. Why not go to GameFly, where well, GameFly um, is like the Netflix, Netflix but, but video for games. games. Right. Well, with GameFly, you know you have to wait in line a lot of times for for the big games on the on the day of. Blockbuster, you can actually just walk in and and grab it, and you know mm-hmm. you st- you still get like like for example with Gears of War three, I got the stickers. With Arkham City, I got the download code. You know you don't necessarily get those with GameFly, but you know I'll just ride the Blockbuster train until they decide to to mess up again. <laughs> and when they're going out of business for the, you know the third time in the two years, then they'll open up again. You know. Well, I, one of the things, of course, that that you mentioned, Blockbuster has. You have to go to a Blockbuster, and yeah. I mean, Netflix offered that convenience. I mean, Netflix was always about convenience. It just came to your door. You didn't have to worry about it. And then they opened up their streaming service, which was just great. Uh, and then they decided to make a move. What did they want? They wanted to make like Netflix was for streaming and Quickster. Yeah. What, no, was, was it the other way around? Netflix was DVDs, Quickster was streaming. No, no ne- it was Netflix, Netflix was, was the uh, was the streaming, and yeah. Quickster was kind of like a, I guess a subsidiary. Or it something. was like a DVD distribution rental yeah. center, like how, how Netflix really got started. They were going to branch it off, which is a whole other thing to me. If it was going to be anything, I think it should have been the other way around because, uh, Netflix was originally sending DVDs through mail. It wasn't watching movies over the internet I mean now the, I don't know it's just it was a pretty I mean you can literally say it was probably a herpaderp done goofed move but it makes me wonder um, what could have led to it could it have been some licensing issues uh, well as it, a as kind of a business person I can kind of see from the internal side of the business it makes sense because the cost of running a server and streaming something as opposed to finding the DVD, buying a whole lot of DVDs and mailing them. Well, they, the cost structures are very, very different, so it makes sense to split them up. But from the consumer side of it, it's just a terrible idea because you're going to piss off all your consumers. I have a feeling that they actually um, they get custom prints on their DVDs because if you look at the DVD itself in Netflix, 
it looks different from the DVD that comes in a box if you go and buy it. And it has its own ring uh, with their barcode on it and things like that. So it almost feels like they get a custom print of it. And I know that they, they must have contracts with the different... Um, I know that they have contracts with the different distributors because they get DVDs sometimes late um, because the distributors have contracts with other people like uh, Blockbuster and um, the online pay-per-views and stuff like that where they could get it actually earlier than uh, Netflix because they pay a premium. So it it's interesting, um, everything that Netflix is going through. Uh, but it, it felt like they shot themselves in the foot with some of their customers to the point where uh, now I see why people left. And I, I don't expect uh, many of those people to really come back because if they did this once, who's to say that they won't do it again? Maybe in a different way or something like that. Mm -hmm. And as I understand, the price change still stands. Yes. It's just the services are back together. Yeah. So yeah, a lot of a lot of very ticked off customers, and they they lost a lot of face through yeah. all of this because it was just. I I mean I guess I could understand your right amount. I mean you know it it I guess would make sense. But if you're if you've been already providing that service, I mean consumers are going to be justifiably annoyed to, to be inconvenienced because Netflix is about convenience and uh, you know I mean it's about the, it's about not having to drive to the blockbuster to pick up whatever it is you wanted to watch it's about you know instant instant gratification right. you know yeah. I stream well, it right now one thing they have to worry about though is because and you know and my family's done this for years we, we also have the blockbuster mailing service where we get uh, three DVDs we, we have a queue you know on the blockbuster website and we get them to our door. We also have the Blockbuster app on every Android phone, almost uh -huh. com coming out know, standard. So we, we have streaming, uh, the mail, and also if you don't feel like waiting for the mail to get there, you just walk in and do an in-store trade right there. How, you know? how much is the Blockbuster though? Um, for the just the in-store only where you get to swap out for one of anything for however long you want, it's like $15 a month. And then I think the other service where you get mailed into, I think it's like, I think it's $20 a month. But you know, it's it's like if you really watch like movies hardcore, you know, because you can send them in, get three more movies like the next day almost, you know. Um, I think it's worth it, you know. Like for example, if I didn't have it in the last couple of months, I would have spent two hundred dollars on video games, but I just spent fifteen bucks, and I had everything day one, no line, no wait, walk in, walk out, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I guess maybe Blockbuster isn't totally dead yet. I mean, the one near my house closed down a while back, and uh, I was. I shed a tear of nostalgia. Yeah, but, same, same here. But I'm definitely not going to shed a tear for all the late fees that yeah, they charge. Them. Yeah, and and those can be a pain in the butt. Um, so, so speaking I, of Netflix's blunders, and this has absolutely nothing to do with Netflix's blunders, but uh, the new ad that PS3 released. Well, it's not new; it's a couple of weeks old at this point. It, it's but, it's a little older than that, but yeah, it's it's a little bit dated. But it, it we're getting around to it. Well, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll we'll get around to a subject when we do. Is a completely different story, we're but fashionably late. We're yes, fashionably, fashionably late. It's the cool thing to do, but we, uh, I the Michael ad, you know. Which which just uh, and it was called actually I guess the official name is Long Live Play or I guess that's the name of the ad campaign yeah. and the ad itself was called Michael and wow what a brilliant 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 ad from Sony uh, Sony you have been making a lot of mistakes lately but that was a good ad I, I give that to you uh, very well well done ad uh, how many how many characters were you able to spot all the characters that showed up in that ad mm, I uh, always find someone new every time I yeah, yeah same yeah. here I, it's always I, someone new and I, I love that about ads like that because you could sit there and you could watch it 20 times and you still find someone new or something different mm -hmm. in which, the ad which is pro par probably part of the brilliance right. and all of it and I loved yeah. seeing all the characters and it, it was kind of a very warm fuzzy right. now um, I'm right in assuming that I'm the only one here who has a PS3 right uh, yeah, yes. yeah. yeah. As as a PS3 owner, it's, it seems like this is an another attempt in their uh their 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 long, we still love you campaign. Yeah, you know, please come back, because it's like, it's been as you guys know, it's been a rough 
rough <laughs> here for Sony. Um, uh, and they, I guess they're trying to make us feel like, hey, look, one of you is named Michael, and I'm sure you look kind of like this dude, you know. <laughs> like, you feel, you feel better? Yeah, it's like, hmm, no. Not really. But, I mean, it was a great commercial, don't get me wrong, but it seems like they're trying to just, like, you know, pander. Yeah, to us. well, yeah, Sony has had a, a rough. Uh, Sony's been making some decisions that are spectacular failures. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we don't we don't have to mention the the PSN crashing, uh, and now they're charging ten dollars if you buy a used game uh, just yeah. to play online. I, which I guess someone else just hacked the PSN network as well, but they said that they um, only uh, downloaded a hundred thousand. Um, different accounts versus their millions and millions of accounts. Oh, and only they hundred thousand. Okay, but yeah. they didn't access any of the credit card information, so I would still be worried. Yeah, but I wouldn't have to check my bank statements. I would just have to check my points and everything, make sure that they're not being used. Yeah, well, well, see, well, yeah. I, I don't even use uh, the PSN with, with, with my card anymore because it's like, well, you know, my info's already out there. I'm not giving you any more to <laughs> screw up with. Yeah, you know? I, well, so yeah, Sony lost a lot of trust. It was quite a frustrating debacle from my understanding. And I have several... I, I know several PS3 fans uh, and... I, I ran back to Xbox. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> for you to yes. go back to Xbox, uh, being a Sony fan... And, and not just go back. Are. I went and bought a new Xbox yeah, just to get back to it. I, I guess that's your form of protest. Yes, exactly. Uh, which, like I said, I mean, I don't know what Sony's thinking because, like, the used game nonsense with... Um, with the the if you don't buy the game new, we charge you ten bucks to play online. The PSN pass, yeah. Why why not just pay for Xbox Live? You know what though, like I uh, I buy on average maybe about five or six used games a year. That comes out to about sixty dollars. So you know it does make more sense. I'd rather just go pay a flat fee to get a service that's reliable, that's always quick, mm -hmm. that has more features. And that won't just say, hey, sorry, we're going to be down for, you know, whenever we feel like it. <laughs> yeah. You know, we may come back or not, but. Yeah, but that said, the Michael ad was really well done. Kind of reminded me of, and I don't know why necessarily, but it did remind me of the Coca-Cola ad from the 70s or 60s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that really famous one with all the people on the hill and they're mm -hmm. singing and they're like, you know, we want to well, buy the world to go. It's yeah, probably that, that little that sense of, you know, together and like right. oneness. Because, you know, they're mm -hmm. all hanging out at the bar, and they have, telling stories, drinking, having a good time. It's that just kind of mentality. And all their stories work together because it's all based off of one person, Michael. So, like, it feels like they have a camaraderie. They belong together almost mm -hmm. because Michael saved them all. And they had some pretty good actors. Yeah. yeah and, yeah. you know, for a little short, they actually invested some acting skill into that. Yeah, you know? and, like a, and a CGI oh, yeah. Kratos. <laughs> I, <laughs> right? I, I got to admit, though, I like the snake. The, yeah. uh, you like snake? I like snake in that. very, very well done. And, mm -hmm. like, I liked how once he leaned against his wall, this, his suit just camouflaged automatically. Yeah, and right. I actually, I have to ask Sony how they got the rights to use all those characters, because they're not just, you know, from Sony's... Right. Uh, yeah, you know, but I'm, it was probably I'm, easy. You know, they're like, "Hey, we could either say no to them or be part of a really awesome ad that everyone's going to talk about." Well, I mean, you know? I mean, because they got some Ubisoft characters, they got you know Activision characters, they got Ezio you know, was there. He's like, "Sup guys?" Yeah, Ubisoft, Ezio. <laughs> you know, when the Templars murdered my family, mm -hmm. that is totally not an Italian accent. Mm -hmm. But you know, and and the other fun thing was just trying to see how many of the characters you could right. find. Yeah, and, it, it's one of those that you guys press. Play, pause, play, oh, pause. Really just pause. Like, and that, that, that's exactly about... how it should be. Right. I mean, you're pretty much getting the person to watch your ad over and over again by their own choosing because they want to see how many people. And I saw right. Chell. I saw um, I saw Ratchet. Yeah. Uh, Ghost was back from the dead uh, yeah. so that he could yell. Yeah. And uh, and then you had the uh, the. Uh, the World War Two soldiers. Yeah, which, they're my favorite. They, the, yeah. the airborne guys. The airborne. I, I I just got a little bit something to say about that. You know, I appreciate you know the story about Omaha Beach. You know, and it's a great story for the ad. But when you wear the combat patch of the 82nd Airborne, you, you did not storm Omaha Beach. <laughs> yeah. You were one of the thousands of misdrops over northern France and Normandy. 
Like, you were not anywhere on the beaches. In World War II, there was one airborne soldier who was on the beach, and that was because his plane got shot down, and he was the only survivor. <laughs> was he 82nd? I think it was the 101st. Oh. Yeah, we have our, yeah. our military it's, historian. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Maybe 82nd, so often they have time traveling time abilities. Time traveling abilities. <laughs> You know, the all Americans, or maybe someone just didn't do enough research. Research, and and you yeah, know what? It doesn't matter. They're they World War Two game stock characters. And yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. They have yeah. no names. It's one of those things. Like at this point, it just it's kind of cool to mention, kind of cool to pick out, but that's doesn't, about it. He yeah. Stop he's ruining a, a fun, Mister Fish. <laughs> Stop ruining avatar. fun. Um. So it it was a good commercial. I think it did its point. I think it got people kind of mit- back interested in it. They showed some characters from different video games that there hasn't been a new video game for quite some time and that they are coming out with a new one, so it got people interested again, like Twisted Metal. Um, I saw Twisted Metal, and instantly I was just like, mm-hmm. you know what? I really love that. I want to go play Twisted Metal now. Right. But And then I uh, I read up on it, and they are coming out with a new Twisted Metal, which has a whole new function in it as well, which uh, maybe we'll talk about another time. But it... If they showed the character in that commercial, I feel that they owe it to their fans. They owe it to everybody that enjoyed that commercial to come out with a new game of that character from the commercial. Mm-hmm. I think most are. You know, Lightning, her, her, uh, FF13 uh, 2 is coming out. Um, we have uh, Uncharted, Drake's Deception. Mm-hmm. Um, we have uh, Revelations coming out, Assassin's, yeah. Assassin's Creed. Um, there's always another Metal Gear coming out. <laughs> yeah, Metal Gear. <laughs> Somewhere. Well, you're going to have there's Metal gonna Gear Rising, yeah. which... Is like the biggest mix of hooray and ah at the same time. Because it's like, hooray, Metal Gear for the 360. Who do we play as? Snake? Big Boss? Oh. Oh, no. No. <laughs> and I'm but, sure there's a little big Plan 3 coming out, too, because Sackboy just cannot die. Yeah, and then <laughs> there's, there's one of the first uh, Insomniac games for the Xbox uh, is coming out uh, over... Overstrike Nine, I think, is what it's called. Well, I forgot the name, but uh, but it, they had a very funny commercial during E3, and that's coming out for Xbox, which excites me because Insomniac, uh, I love Insomniac's games. So, but do you, is are they coming out with a new God of War? They're coming out with a God of War for the PS Vita. Uh, yeah, and everyone in that commercial has a, a, a PS Vita launch game. Yeah, okay. I don't know if they're coming out with another Ratchet and Clank, are they? They're, they're, they're porting one. Okay. See, I, I, it feels like it's almost a scapegoat if they just copy over another game to a PSP that wasn't on the PSP before or something like that. Well, I mean, I'm down with it because like, pretty much the PS Vita is like a portable, less powerful PS3. Yeah. You know, and all I care about is really I'm getting UMVC3 on the go. <laughs> now, the, <laughs> now, the question uh, is, are you going to get UMVC3... For the Xbox or for PS3? See, here's the thing. If I had my way, but I would get it for Xbox. But that means I have to rebuy uh, Jill and Shuma Gorath, and I'm not, I'm not doing that. <laughs> um, now, if they happen to come with like a collector's edition, then I'll go get the Xbox collector's edition, and so I'll just start playing alive. You're telling us you're gonna be a loner and play by yourself instead of joining us on Xbox? <laughs> I, I I have my MVC th- uh, three friends on a. Uh, PS3, you know, me and, like, you know, two other guys. David, um, <laughs> it's, it's time to, to relent it, it, and do what you must. Can I come back home? Is it, is it, is it okay? It's time, <laughs> it's time for you to drop the PS3 where they're going to charge you for pretty much having the Xbox Live subscription but not giving you all the benefits and come join us it, on it, Xbox. I think I'm ready to join the dark side. You know, I haven't turned my PS3 on since I got my Gears of War 3 Xbox. Yeah, well. I really haven't. Why would you? That no, sounds about right. Right. <laughs> But uh, n- not to bash too excessively on Sony, I'm thinking of getting a PS3 myself yeah, simply I'm, because mm-hmm. I'd like. I'd, I'd, P- PS3 has some great games yeah. on there. It's a nice they product. Do. They they do nice work, but it's there's there's, there's some guy in, in the business department who just does not make good decisions. Yeah. <laughs> I think they hired him from Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, he's getting a lot so, of work these days, man. <laughs> so I mean, same here. I I want to get a PS3 partly for the Blu-ray. Uh, uh, 3D Blu-ray, of, 3D Blu-ray possibility of it, which I know that there's Blu-ray players out there that's cheaper. However, having it being also a system where, as I said, I'm a big Twisted Metal fan, I would definitely want to get it for that. And then there's a few other games here and there that's only for PS3 that would be interesting getting. 
but I don't at this time I'm I'm arguing with myself whether if it's enough to push me over. Well, wow. you know, do you like Japanese games like the um the JRPGs? Not a whole lot. Then I, I would say stick with your Xbox. <laughs> well, I will say PS3 is pretty affordable product right now actually. Used to be uh, not, but yeah, <laughs> now not. now it's actually not a bad price. I think you get like 130 gig PS3 for like 250. Yeah, it's the same yeah. price as which the Xbox is, now. Which is a pretty reasonable price. And, you know, my first console was the PlayStation 1. So, I don't have any particular, you know, dislike for Sony, yeah. necessarily. I just didn't get the PlayStation 2, which was silly because there were a lot of great games on the PlayStation yeah. 2. I'm thinking but, about buying a new one, actually. Uh, another PS2. Uh, I, I, one, I switched to the Xbox because of Halo. I am... I'm a Halo fan. Yeah, but Sony's been making... This yeah. is like the one good thing they've done all year. I mean, they've even pushed the PS Vita back to next year. They're launching it this year in Japan, but next year for everyone else. See, you know? I don't get that. So Why? you will move to Japan? It's probably because of the price drop with the, the 3DS. They're like, oh, see. crap. All right, that was our advantage. Um, <laughs> well, see, I don't know. 3DS is, know, is kind of having some trouble right now. 3DS dropped in price because it's not doing well. Yeah, it's just it, yeah. economics. Right it there. feels like if it would have dropped in the U.S., that could have maybe killed the 3DS even more. Yeah, yeah. you, you would think, Sony. you know, but because I want my U and VC3 possibly, on the go. Possibly more bad decisions. And Ninja Storm eventually. Oh my God! Listen, um, I, I would I would never be on the podcast again because I would only be playing Ninja Storm on the go. Well, no, you you would be. We would hear buttons. Pushing. <laughs> yeah. That's click, all. click 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 click. Hi, Jutsu. Um, <laughs> but it's. I mean. If they come out with a combo pack with the new Twist of Metal and a PS3 for a 120 gig drive for 250, mm. I would probably get it. The one thing they didn't do talking about bundles though is they didn't do what Xbox does. You know, it's like like for example, with Gears of War three. When they released the Gears of War three bundle, it's a Gears of War three Xbox. Yeah. When with Sony, it's like here's a Final Fantasy thirteen with a, a PS3. I mean, it's the same exact PS3 you can get anywhere else, but, you know, it's like, they need to... That, is, that is a bit fun that they have the uh, the, the, the special edition Xboxes. Yeah, make so it really if you're really a particular special. fan of a yeah. franchise, you can get that, you know, Xbox that, that's kind of reflective of that. Uh, Xbox used to do that, I think, in uh, the first Xbox, the mm-hmm. original Xbox, but it was more of a limited edition. It was harder to get your hands on. Yeah. And... Um, uh, I actually do enjoy that. I kind of wanted to get the the uh, Halo Reach mm-hmm. 360, but I didn't have the money to at the time. But yeah, I, I I think I think I think PS3 is still worth getting your hands on. It's mm-hmm. just someone at Sony needs to be fired. Just just get it before they take any more functions away from it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, I like, think Sony's the problem. Games. Sony's biggest problem is they assume that that. You, after you buy the game or the console, it still belongs to them. You're just borrowing it from them kind of, to yeah. play, and that. that that mentality just pisses people off. Yeah, maybe they're, they're just being uber defensive right now because someone just literally walked up into their servers and said, "This is mine now." Yeah, <laughs> you know. Uh, so they're having a little bit of an ego. Yeah, a little ego, you know, because like you know, you know, being a Japanese company, saving face is really important culturally. So, so they're they're probably overreacting. I like, uh, yeah, I. It's one of those things, like, for me, personally, if it's a single-player game, not an online game, um, where it's supposed to be so visually stimulating, where it is a lot of times with the single-player games, I'll probably want to get it for PS3, because PS3 has the better graphics. But if, you're gonna but if it's friends. an online game or a big multiplayer, I'd probably want to go with Xbox, because Xbox has the better online uh, network and system, so I feel. Xbox, if you have friends, PS3, if you hate the world... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, not necessarily if you hate the world, but if you want that visually stunning graphics. Because let's face it, we saw um, this might be a good segue in, but we saw uh, the Batman Arkham City on the Xbox, which looked great. But if it was on a PS3 graphics and system, imagine how much better it would look. Well, I think when it comes to third-party games, where which are cross-platform, the graphics almost always are identical. I think the three, the the PlayStation Three, is sometimes a little darker. Yeah, well, graphically, it, it's usually I, they're 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 told if they're going, if you're going to have it on both systems, they need to be equal. Yeah, uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I thought it's always. I, thought it's I, I know PS3 exclusive games generally look gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which 
like I like I've said before, I care more about aesthetic quality than than graphic quality. A game can be graphically not look too good and then aesthetically look great, and you won't care. Right. Uh, like for example, the Nintendo Wii does not have uh, super buffed out graphics at but, all. But if you take a developer that knows good aesthetics, you could have a Wii game that even though it doesn't have good graphics, still looks really good. And. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, some car just drove off like a you bat realize, out of hell. You do realize the microphone might have not even picked that up at all. Yeah, but even if it did not pick that up... It was probably the, the uh, DeLorean. Going back in time, <laughs> yeah. Or whatever. Cool. It so, still uh, was really distracting. You do have a... You do, this is a neighborhood that looks like it's back out uh, from Back to the Future. It does. Yeah. It does. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, not neighborhood. We're, we, you mean bunker, right? Yes. We're in a bunker. Yes. We're we're, we're not yeah. we're not yeah. in a basement. We're not in someone's yes. mo- someone's basement underneath their parents' house. We're, no, because that would be weird. Yeah. yeah, and we are not weird at right. all. We're no. totally normal. But uh, yeah, what what were we talking about? <laughs> the oh, PS3. About oh time yes. Travel. Oh yeah. PS3. Time travel and then the PS3. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I mean, what else is there? I mean, I, like I said, graphics, so, yeah, I was talking about graphics versus aesthetics. Mm-hmm. Graphically, I mean, uh, like a Nintendo game can look really good and not have incredible graphics. Metroid Prime 3 didn't have, you know, super mm-hmm. awesome graphics, but it looked good. But, you know, it's like, if, if I, uh, if I have a giant screen epic TV, you know, that you spend a lot of money on, my games better look as great as possible. <laughs> yeah, but it's not. It's not the. I mean, like I said, what makes a game look good is not. It's not graphics. It's. it's but is the, it too it's much to have both? It's not. But like, I, like I said, I think I mentioned this in another podcast. You have games like Killzone, which have incredible graphics but a really poor aesthetic. The game looks ugly to me. And Hell game is ugly. Well, yeah, <laughs> and it's gray and and I mean it's like. You have all that graphical power, and you're using it to render gray, brown, and gunmetal, and that's it. Well, I think that was probably the, the the point, though, was to show how depressing. And, yeah, and, I know, but it's know. it's one thing to like Gears of War kind of started that whole brownish, grayish kind of palette, color palette. Except Gears of War three actually has color in it, which surprised me. But there was like yellow yeah, like, and I was orange. Really surprised and, to see green. In I was like, Gears wait 3. a minute. And I'm like, this this isn't uh, Gears, but. You know, it, it's one thing. It's it's kind of a lazy, lazy. One thing I've always loved about the Halo series, uh, not to gush too much about Halo, is they've always been very colorful, bright, bright color palette. Gush, uh, gush. I will gush some more about Halo and say that I think this is a good segue to uh, games we are anticipating because there are a ton of games coming out because of the Christmas rush, you know, and the holiday rush, and. One of them is Halo Anniversary, and I am looking forward to that. And it looks beautiful. It looks well, absolutely that looks beautiful. Didn't matter. That's that's the whole thing <laughs> well, about no, it. Well, no, I said it looks beautiful. Uh, it's gr- not a new game. It's a new design. Yeah, and uh, that's certainly a game I intend to pick up because Halo was my first uh, console first-person shooter. I didn't play GoldenEye until after I had played Halo. What? Well, I didn't have an N64. So no excuse. You, you, you I'm go sure create you had one. friends that had it. Right? No, I, I had Oh, you didn't? I played... Okay. I have that was I'm not saying that was my first first-person <laughs> yeah. shooter. I played Doom. Okay. But, uh, That's acceptable. But uh, I never had... I didn't play GoldenEye, and to be frank, GoldenEye, after playing, you know, a traditional two-stick... Well, I guess it's not so traditional. It's fairly new. It's only like 10 years old. But the two-stick console-based, I could not play GoldenEye for the life of me. But... Um, but yeah, what do we got? We got Battlefield 3. We have Arkham City that just came out. Uh, we have, uh, we have Gears of War 3 that just came out, but we have, you know, we have Battlefield 3 coming out. Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Call of Duty. Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 3, which I will probably skip, but I know a lot of people like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have... Star Wars, the Old Republic. Star Wars, the Old Republic. And we have Skyrim. We have Skyrim Elder people. Scrolls. I can one, I can one up that. We have Assassin's Creed Revelations. But it's Skyrim. I could I could up that. We have Star Wars: The Old Republic. 
the new Star Wars MMO, which is supposed to be possibly redeeming the whole Star Wars MMO that they first uh, came Star out Wars with. Galaxies. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, yeah. At first it was good, but then they just shot themselves in the foot. Why? Because they had Sony Online Entertainment in charge of it. Yeah. That should automatically be a sign. But Sony screwing everything up. <laughs> it's like, yeah. You know what? That's that's one bridge I'm not necessarily too afraid of burning. If no. it's just Sony. It's just Sony. And not the game developers because they they, they have great games. They have great it. games on there, but Sony keeps on like they build up this great uh, immaculate bridge that looks so fantastic, and let's go ahead and throw a match on it. You know, yeah. like they gave a monkey gold. You don't know what to do with it, you know? Uh, uh, we have FF13 too well, coming out as yeah. well. Who he knows yeah. what to do with it. Well, <laughs> yeah. not that I would ever <laughs> sit through a Final <laughs> Fantasy game hey, long hey, enough no. to get interested. Hey, no, hey, hey. So, Final uh, Fantasy 13 bored me. I was yeah, like, when is something going to happen? That was boring. Uh, uh, I, I felt like uh, the Final Fantasy people kind of rushed it out because they wanted to show Sony... See, we could have it so on Xbox too. Well, what, what happened with with that, that that whole situation is that um, the game was actually a lot bigger. It was better. It was, it was more open world. But in order to have it be multi platform, it had to be the same game. And Xbox didn't want to go past four discs, so they had to cut out enough to bring yeah, it down to four, four discs. Di- more like five, six discs is a little. Well, because see, the thing is, because that five or six discs on Xbox would have just been one disc on PS3. Yeah. So they had they had to cut it out, and that's why the game ended up being so. You know, which is, what you saw. Which is something that definitely is a benefit for uh, PS3 is because you don't need like All a briefcase of disc just to play one game. I mean, if, if we ever got a dual disc um, game on PS3, we know that's like the greatest giantest game of all time I don't know about saying the greatest but it's definitely well great in size great in size many hours of money well invested if you want to just sit down and play a game a lesson I guess that Microsoft has learned with the PS3 is to invest in Blu-ray the discs are ten times the size of DVDs they need to swallow their pride (laughs) HD DVD lost Blu-ray won so pay Sony for every game and console you uh, (laughs) you produce I'm pretty sure next time Microsoft will go with Blu-ray, but I'm sure that they are, or they come out with something that actually, or they might just say, you know, screw discs altogether. Yeah, that's 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 a whole other topic that some uh, systems are doing and some people are doing is let's just get rid of all discs and let's just go pure digital. Yeah, in which case, Mm. I mean, that would kill retail. That's 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 bad in a lot of ways. GameStop would be horrible. GameStop would be gone. GameStop would be like what if you lost your console? And they well, wanted to be funny about giving you your downloads back. See that that be because you would have a um, online account that you could basically go and like like Steam, right? All pre- what's up? Like Steam. Yeah, like I Steam yeah. or like um, iTunes. I'm a little right. wary. Maybe it's because I don't like change, but I kind of like owning a, 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 a copy <laughs> of the game. Yeah, I'm just sitting here with a comment. Well, you know, Microsoft is kind of already on the way to that sort of thing because most games now you can just download from if you Xbox want. To. Live yeah, you right. could just download them and play it, and which. And, and I'd be down for paying an extra five Xbox. bucks to okay. get a mail-in copy. So to get back on topic, what are some of your uh, most anticipated games for the before the end of the year? Mr. Bitch? I would have to say, I mean, aside from being a total Halo tard, like my uh, compatriot over here. Halo! Halo! Right, I would have to say Assassin's Creed Revelations. I came in very, very late. Like yesterday, Creed. and I actually two days ago beat Assassin's Creed two, and I'm like, I need to go spend all the money I don't have and buy Brotherhood, <laughs> and then buy Revelation so I can know what happens and get caught up. <laughs> yeah, because like I, I'm a big history buff, and I love the history of the game and how it throws you into the culture of the time, and with all this weird sci-fi crap that's happening in the background. That you forget about because you're busy like stabbing people in the neck with your hidden <laughs> blade. And then, oh wait, then there's the sci-fi crap again, which you're also really interested in. But then you go back to stabbing people. It's yeah, like, I, I actually do love the historical fiction aspect. The funny coincidence is when I was playing Assassin's Creed 2, I was working on a paper um, based off... Uh, it was a paper on uh, The Prince by Niccolo Machiavelli. And all of a sudden... Nicola Machiavelli shows up in my video game. I'm like, what's going on here? This is madness. And uh, This is Sparta. I could actually say that Assassin's Creed made me take a history course. Yeah, and, <laughs> like, and that's, that's something that, that I think is really 
great. It's a little off topic here, but uh, Extra Credits, uh, the show that was at The Escapist, now it's on Penny Arcade, uh, they did an episode called Tangential Learning. And the way Assassin's Creed kind of makes you interested in uh, Renaissance Italy, which, l let's be honest with you, I've said, I'm going to talk to you about Renaissance Italy right now. You would probably not care. But suddenly when I say, okay, this video game is set in Renaissance Italy, and it's about the Medici family, and, uh, and you know, you have Leonardo uh, da Vinci in it and Nicola Machiavelli, all of a sudden you're like... Oh, this is interesting. It's around and you me. add death and See, death and murder. I if <sighs> if you tell me just that, I don't care still. And I really don't. Sense. But then if you say you're a stealth assassin sent by Leonardo da Vinci on missions, well, you're not sent by Leonardo Andrew. da Vinci, but your <laughs> weapons are invented by okay. Leonardo da okay, Vinci. Okay, the weapons evolve. Then I I get interested with that because it's rather than like oh see see that man over there in the corner that's Leonardo da Vinci. That's it. Like I, that's what that's what I think of when you say that he's in the game. I don't know that there's any interaction. Well, I I think I think what what Assassin's Creed did really well, and the first the previous game was set in the Tenth Crusade, and so there was plenty of you know you know more history. Uh, I think I think Assassin's Creed is is a wonderful wonderful series, and uh, and I'm really looking forward to Revolution, which takes place in Constantinople. Right. Which I mean, like I said, if you're a big fan of world history. And you actually stayed up during World History class, and Assassin's Creed is a very special treat for And it's you. going to end Ezio's story. I yeah, seen... which makes me sad, because I like Ezio. No, but it's then time again, it's time, it's time, it's time, time for him to move on, though. To me, I love history. I love learning history. I'm a philosophy major, and I love ancient Greece, and I like mm -hmm. the medieval times and things like that. But I just didn't really care for Assassin's Creed. You really? It I... just, to me, it seemed like I didn't get enough history with the first one. I got more killing and assassinations and everything, but I, it just felt like there wasn't enough well, substance for what I, I was I looking think, for. I think a, like the first time. Assassin's Creed was set during the Crusades, but really there weren't too many characters. Well, actually, all the Templars were based off real people. Yeah. Mm. But, um, but I mean, like, I think I think Assassin's Creed 2 and then Brotherhood really went into They were a lot better than the first one. I mean, they had the Borgia in, in, as the bad guys in, in uh, Brotherhood, which was like, wait a minute. I, I know who the Borgias are. I, I wasn't asleep that day in history class. Um, <laughs> right. So, I mean, all, that's always kind of fun. Right. And I'm looking forward to seeing what they do in Constantinople, uh, and, and, which was part of the Byzantine Empire. I think at this point, though, in the story, it wouldn't be the Byzantine Empire anymore. It would be part of the Ottoman Empire. Yeah. Not exactly. They, it's in, in, a, in, it's the, in the Ottoman yeah. Empire. Yeah, but but um, yeah. along but, those same lines, though, I'm looking forward to Ultimate Marvel versus Capcom 3. That's the same time period as uh, Assassin's Creed, actually, if you, you didn't know. Oh, really? <laughs> um, yeah, it's the same. Uh, Hulk was back. He was there smashing. Iron Man actually existed back then <laughs> with this current technology. It was fantastic. But um, they, they, they redid the game. It looks, uh, I kind of prefer the old look, but if it, this is what ha it has to be done for me to get Hawkeye and Stri um, Strider in the game, I'll, I'll accept it. Well, I don't know. I mean... <laughs> I, I, I am not particularly invested into fighting games or Capcom in general, but I, I heard this game pissed off a lot of people because they released Marvel vs. Capcom, and then they pretty much released the same exact game. Mm -hmm. yeah, we're not sure if it's because of, the, of the, uh, the earthquake or whatever. I'm sure they have some kind of excuse. But, um, but it doesn't mean that that's a valid excuse. Right, because they, 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 did, they did this whole thing with um, Street Fighter. They had Street Fighter 4, then Super Street Fighter 4, then Super Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition. <laughs> you know. Let's let's face it. Probably if, charged sixty dollars to read. No, it, 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 it was it was sixty forty twenty. And let's face it, if they would have said, "Hey, we had a big earthquake. This game is going to come out a month late," I don't think that there would be one person in the world to be like, "You know what? Screw you! I don't care. No, you have no, an earthquake you'd be surprised. and many people died." O o online, the the minute this earthquake happened, people were like. Where's my manga? Where are my games? It's like, really? Well, <laughs> like, people, really, dude? They're just not human, then. Right. It's, it's like that's what your that's what your mind went to. That was the first thing you thought about. Yeah, but, well, uh, so. I know that there was there was a particular response in the gaming community to the earthquake because Japan is one of yeah it is yeah. the second. Well, Japan and the United States are the two biggest yeah, game producers it's pretty much in the us world. And them. And, and and to a lot of gamers, Japan has done a lot of great things, and there was a lot of you know, there was you know a lot of sadness around that. Of course, also you know, yeah. it was a horrible, horrible tragedy. But I don't know a lot. Capcom, Capcom, uh, 
I don't know. I mean, the the releasing the but the game. They're giving us old characters back. I mean, they should have been See, there. In the they should have been there in the See, first place. And right? one thing I don't understand is that it should have been one of those things like how they had the two characters that you could buy online. Just buy those characters. Like you should be able to buy these additional characters, right. but not have it cost forty dollars. And the demo anything. characters aren't from the first game aren't in this one. Jill, you have to re either have to already have bought them or you rebuy Jill and Shumagora, which is a little messed up. And there was two characters on MBC three disc on the on the disc that we didn't get. It was Doc Ock and um uh, the the guy from Dead Rising, Frank West. Yeah, Frank uh, Frank West. He's he's in he's he's in Ultimate, uh, but Doc Ock is nowhere to be found, and he's all he's already on the disc. You know, it's like why are you not just yeah? I paid for it. Just give me what I I paid yeah, for. Yeah, and that is a little frustrating. The on disc DLC, which yeah, is another list of horrible horrible things. So, um, yeah, like we could go on and on and on for hours as we have in the past about Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom. But some of the other big games that's coming out this year, I I feel like I gotta mention um, one game. Now this is for PS3. This would be one of those games that would heavily make me consider getting a PS3, um, especially down the line, possibly a used one or as package if deal good enough comes out. But it's Uncharted Three. Drake's Deception. Yes. Now. This is one of, like Uncharted is one of those series that I could sit there and I could watch a friend play for hours. Yeah, it's a movie. Because it yeah, it's a movie that you play. It's so visually satisfying. And I've heard stories of people that sit there and they'll play the game with their girlfriend sitting next to them, and their girlfriend thinks that they're actually watching a movie. Yeah. They don't realize it's actually a game. So I mean, it it's so it's satisfying it, in many different ways. That is true. I mean, I've heard arguments that people there are a lot of people who don't like it when games get very cinematic. Uh, namely, and, and I kind of tend to agree with that sentiment because they're not movies and they should not be treated like movies, but that's one of those Drake's, things I think it away with the, it. The, the, the uh, Uncharted series, it looks good. It, it's a combination of a lot of different gameplay mechanics and they make them work really well together. Yeah. And uh, it looks fun. I haven't played a single one of them, but uh, they look fun. I yeah. probably enjoy them. Um, I think it's one of those games it, that brings people over. It almost seems like, uh, for me, like the original Bioshock. I have never played the original Bioshock, but I have watched someone play the entire game, and it's to the point where I feel like I played the game. Yeah. Because I've watched all you of You played well, Biosmosis. Well, it, it, exactly. Well, you know, if you I have not played... Watching. Matt, I'm sorry. If you have not played the original Bioshock yet, you need to play the original Bioshock already. Come on. Well, someone say out, that about oh, Uncharted. Well, they're coming out yeah. with the next Bioshock game. I don't think it's before the end of the year, but I, that's a game I'm... Definitely play the original Bioshock game, man. Yeah, the new the new one that's the, coming out is really good. Infinite, which is coming out, which is going to be awesome. But I don't think it's coming out this year, so it's not in the topic. Battlefield Three is coming out in a couple of weeks, yes. I think. And it's coming out know, next week. Next yeah, week. Next week. That's going to be a huge today. game. So it's like, what am I supposed to do? Do I get Arkham City? Do I get Battlefield Three? Well, you what? get Arkham City. Play it this week, and by the time Tuesday comes, by the time that Battlefield Three comes out. You should be just about done, if not done well, with no, it. Well, no, let's, let's bring it full circle. What you do is you go to Blockbuster, pay the $15, you get Arkham this week, and go back and get, you know, Battlefield next week and pay one but, fee. But, but, yeah, yeah, well, we're not commercial for uh, Blockbuster. And let's face it, Battlefield 3 is going to be one of those games yeah, that you, you want to keep. keep for a while. Really? Because you're going to want to play online with your friends. Yeah, see, I don't, I don't do the online thing for shooters. It's all about multiplayer. And, yeah, I usually rage against games that are all about multiplayer, but Battlefield's probably my exception because I'm used to you team up with a bunch of your friends, you have 150 tickets, the enemy has 150 tickets, and you go. And yeah, and it's just and you do that for days. It looks exciting <laughs> in every single way, and it will probably. I'm hoping it knocks the crap out of Modern Warfare Three. That's my secret wish. Mm-hmm. Um, there's another first-person shooter that's coming out, and it's Xbox. It's basically a revision of GoldenEye. It's GoldenEye 007 Reloaded. And I've loved the crap out of the original GoldenEye game on my uh, N64. Yeah, they're milking it a little bit. This is the second remake, right? That's coming out in the last two years? Because there's, yeah. the, there's, one, there's one for the yeah. Wii. <laughs> there's one for yeah. the Wii. And now there's one for the Xbox. They well, need to stop. I, Don't I, kill I it I have not now. actually heard of this game. So it's, it's supposed to come out... Um, November first, nope. from <laughs> Game, Skyrim. Game Stop. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's it's when does Skyrim come out? Skyrim comes out 11, 11, 11. I, so, That's too hard to remember. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. it uh, comes out uh, November eleventh, two thousand eleven, and 
Skyrim was number one on our top ten things uh, codenamed Epic liked about E3. And uh, go watch the video on YouTube. Is it gonna be better Wait, than Oblivion? We video. No, it's not. No, there. It's up there. Is okay. it gonna be better than Oblivion uh-huh. though? Because that game was boring. I'm sorry. I know it you was thought game Oblivion of the year. was boring. I even bought the game of the year edition and I played it and I'm like, why well, am I I'm walking I'm... through a gray field with a sword in my hand, swinging at nothing? But but Oblivion was awesome. I mean, it wasn't as good as Morrowind, but it it was awesome. It's it's one of those games that you have to have a taste for. Well, yeah, I mean, if you're an Elder Scrolls fan, you will like, buy this game. But Oblivion Skyrim looks so look. exciting. Like, so Oblivion had the look that we all wish Morrowind had. And Morrowind was limited by the graphics. Well, no, actually, I, I, I disagree. The prob- the biggest problem with Oblivion to me was that the, the locale looked like a Western European forest followed by a Western European forest followed by more Western European <laughs> forest versus Morrowind was you start in a swamp and then you're in a desert and then you're in the Ashlands and then you're in uh, another... Locale and it was a, it, there were mushrooms that people lived in. I mean, it was exciting. It, it, the the locales were interesting, and there was a sense of journey versus Oblivion. Kind of had this kind of sameishness to it. But I mean, Skyrim has dragons that will show up out of nowhere and try to eat you. I mean, that just okay. Now you but, know I you know I love dragons, right? Do you I, like dragons? I, my interest has been peaked. Yeah, okay, so, yeah, dragons. Yeah, okay, pretty much. Have you played Dragon Age? Because it has dragon like, in the title. I played it for like a good. 30 minutes, and I'm like, I'm taking you back to Blockbuster. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, um, let's just put it this way. If, you, if you're if you a little primer to the Elder Scroll universe, dragons have been pretty much talked about in every single Elder Scroll game, but never ever really been seen. Um, and then now all of a sudden, they've arrived. And, and they're eating people now. And they're trying to, like, destroy the world. So oh, that's cool. And you, your character is the dragonborn, and pretty much it's a dude with the soul of a dragon. So... You can use dragon powers. Like, you can steal powers from dragons and, and use them to breathe fire or call Can a storm. you ride a dragon? I don't know yet. There's, but... there's a series of books I, I gotta let you borrow later on. It's called Dragon Society. And it's basically, in this world, dragons are born from man. Hmm. So it, it's, it's very interesting. Men, That's awkward. Men live to be a thousand years old because they have a hatchling of a dragon growing inside of them until they give birth. That just and sounds kind of... And they crash... Like, the... They split open the man's chest and out comes a dragon. That's just kind of weird and so scary. You, so you get a thousand good years in return wait, for dying. Wait, so yeah, <laughs> so horribly. Great. And nobody knows. Like, <laughs> nobody knows that that's how how a dragon is born it's until like the aliens last book. Meet dragons, basically. Yeah, it's yeah. Great. aliens and Aragorn. It is, yeah. it is one, one of the together. best. <laughs> it's one of the best sci-fi series I've ever read, mm-hmm. and it, I, I I had to hunt them down on Amazon a few years after the print just to be able finish reading the story arc i like i don't know how i missed this are there any games that but, we're uh, all looking forward to though uh so i mentioned golden eye it's one of those games that i'm i'm probably gonna rent mm-hmm. i'm probably gonna borrow i'm gonna see how it is if it's a great great game i'll buy it but i have a feeling it's gonna be one of those games it'd be fun for a couple days especially getting back into golden eye but after that we'll see um then there's call of duty modern War- warfare 3 this is return to the Modern Warfare series franchise, which so many people stayed on to and didn't even go to Black Ops because they didn't want to betray the Modern Warfare. No, uh. I enjoyed Modern Warfare 2, but it was also Modern Warfare 2 that made me swear to never pay full price for Call of Duty ever again, ever. <laughs> because there is absolutely no reason why I should pay sixty dollars to play a four-hour single player. Like I, I'm yeah. sorry. You, well, you yeah, you don't play it. It's one of those games you don't play it for the single player. You don't play it for the story. You play it for the multiplayer. Which yeah, and if you're gonna do that, don't charge me sixty bucks for it. That's Just all. Don't include the story mode. That's that's all I ask. I mean, uh, Modern Warfare Two was a game that it had great gameplay moments, but overall. The story was terrible. The characters were uninteresting. It made no sense when you. The more I think about Modern Warfare 2's plot, the less sense it actually makes to me. And I, I think it's funny that to play in at least Black Ops, to get the golden gun, you need to beat the game so many times on story mode just to get the golden gun. Well, they figure it takes you about five minutes to do it, so it's not that much of an <laughs> But I gotta admit, I like the story in Black Ops. I like the music, and I like the little bit of a story that you do have in it. 
I actually thought okay, and at least he kills the guy at the end. Yeah, well, I thought Black Ops. Kind Black of. Ops had uh, the, the 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 it had like flashes of good ideas in there. I, I like the Manchurian Candidate story that they did. Yeah, I mean, like, and if you don't know what Manchurian Candidate is, Google it. Go watch. The uh, movie. Seriously, watch guys, the movie or culture yourselves a little bit. <laughs> but um, the Ma- and watch the original. Okay. But Manchurian Candidate storyline going, I thought that was kind of interesting, even though I saw the twist coming like a mile away. And the Cold War setting was interesting to me. It was an interesting setting. But overall, Black Ops was kind of a forgettable experience. It felt... It, it, it felt like... It felt like Modern Warfare 2 in the 60s. Which, it did a really good job at being Modern Warfare 2 in the 60s, but it was Modern Warfare 2 in the 60s. And... Uh, at least it did not offend me as much as Modern Warfare 2 did. Um, what could possibly have happened in Modern Warfare 2 that would offend you? Well, uh, the, the last two missions in particular personally pissed me off uh, to such large degrees. Because uh, the last two levels of Modern Warfare 2, for those of you who do not know, but you probably do know, you gun down American servicemen. Oh, the, the no Russian. Um, well, not no Russian. The no Russian, you gun down innocent people, which was oh. just tasteless in general. Uh, and I'm not one of those people who's like, no, video games cause violence. I just thought it was tasteless. Um, that could have been taken care of in a cutscene. Cutscene or, or some other way. It gives you the option to skip it, too. Doesn't yeah, it does, it, it, because it was an outrage. And, and, it, and it affected you emotionally. So maybe they, they got their point across. No, I just... I, I wasn't affected emotionally. It was more You're like... talking about it now. I'm talking about it now <laughs> because I thought it was such a lame... It was a lame attempt to, attempt to grab attention, in my opinion. It was like, ha, oh, controversy! But no, the last two levels of the game uh, pissed me off more than No Russian because you are gunning down American servicemen. For all intents and purposes, you can call them... Uh, you know, black operatives or, or, you know, they're bad guys, but they're American servicemen. And uh, uh, being the uh, jingoist that I am, I, uh, I was not exactly uh, excited. I wasn't thrilled about it, not to mention the twist didn't make any sense uh, to me. So Modern Warfare 2 just upset me on a lot of levels in its campaign. Great multiplayer, but its campaign, not to mention that the campaign just in general felt like a tutorial for the multiplayer less than anything else but but there's there's still two more games that at least I'm looking forward to and the first one to come out is Star Wars The Old Republic oh yes this is a game yes. I am making a guild with a friend uh, we're yet to come out with a name for it we're throwing around some ideas one is T.O.R. Tor for The Old Republic <laughs> um, thinking around some or couple codenamed Epic <laughs> yeah no um, tossing around some other ideas uh but that's to be announced. Um, this is a much, much anticipated game. Uh, yes, I would say so. You could finally be a Sith and just walk around and just kill hey, people hey, at random. Can, who agrees with me? The little uh, animated commercials that they did every year for E3 looked more interesting than the prequels to Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think so. <laughs> I was like, I wish I, that was what the prequels it, were about. I, it, I like Episode down. 3. It, 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 and I like Jar Jar Binks. Oh, wow. I know I'm going to receive hate mail, okay. but All I like right. Jar Jar Binks. I think he's a... Funny comic relief <laughs> character. I think well, he's it's, it's entertaining. It's like I don't even know you. <laughs> I think it's <laughs> funny how he gets in the Jedi's ways, but yet they say, "Go ahead, come on, follow us." Yeah. At the same time, I, but I'm actually gonna cry right now. Okay, here I'm, I'm making you feel better. Do you remember that trailer from E3? Yeah, when that door opens up. Yeah, yeah, that was awesome. All the yes, that step was out. so awesome. I, at that moment, I'm like, I'm buying this game. Yeah, right, and then I number and I shall pay it, sir. And, and I was <laughs> go around choking people, lightning people. Thank you. Well, that's all you, I want to do. You could do that in uh, the Force Unleashed. No, no, I want, I want to have fun. Ooh, I want to do it where it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and yeah, Force Unleashed is entertaining. Yeah, for like but, five minutes. But yeah, it's it was entertaining better. while you played as Darth Vader. And oh yeah, like, in I, the versus mode or whatever, where you like just. Force like kill. the first like twenty minutes of the storyline, I'm like, oh sweet, I'm Darth Vader. I get to choke people and be all badass. It's like, wait, I'm not Darth Vader. Now I'm this little whiny kid. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. I I enjoyed that series. I um, yeah, I'm waiting to see if they come out with a third one. Uh, but, so we'll see. Wow meets Star Wars. I mean, I I mean, I was a better wild graphics. Card for it looks years. nice. I mean, I I think I, it's interesting I that gotta buy that <laughs> that uh, Lucas Arts. Picked Bioware, who's never 
done an MMO to do this one. But they do their work, though. You know, he's like, "Look, can you guys do something good with this?" I, I think it's interesting that they go with an unexperienced team in an MMO to do this, rather than try to go with someone. Try to go with. I don't want to say necessarily Blizzard because Blizzard would be like, "We'll do it," but we don't want you to be any part of it because Blizzard's Blizzard. <laughs> Basically, they'll take it and take over it, which. I don't know necessarily be a bad thing because they've had so much experience and right. success. But it'll end up being the well, same thing, though. If anybody but should... But it sounds like it is kind of the yeah, same actually, thing. Yeah, it does sound like it end up being the it same thing like, anyway. It sounds like... Like, Bioware's like, you know what? What's the biggest MMO right now? World of Warcraft! Let's copy you guys. And what's our... One of our most successful games? Mass right. Effect! Well... Let's combine them! Well, actually, I mean... The Old Republic is based off Knights of the Old Republic. I think it takes place like 300 years before yeah. Knights of the Old Republic. This and Knights is... of the Old Republic was a, an incredible game. When and, it first came out. Yeah, and so seeing Knights of the Old Republic as an MMO, which is what this is, it's pretty exciting. But I have a Mac, so... <laughs> so he will not be joining us. You do not have to worry about hearing Armin's rants and, um, I mean, Armin's so, speeches. So uh, half of our, half, half of our group will be a... seven through boot camp and you play it. <laughs> um, I don't want to taint my Mac. Uh, <laughs> already done. You don't want to taint your Mac with fun and enjoyment and uh, friends and they'll, lightsabers. They'll, they'll come around. Bioware will come around. I know it. And by the time we'll be uh, on the second game. Yeah. It'll, it'll basically <laughs> be uh, two uh, Blizzard's Titan, Pro- what, what, whatever Titan. Titan is. Project Titan. Uh, but it's it's one of those things, I, I think a lot of people are looking forward to it because, first of all, everyone, so many people are Star Wars fans. Second of all, it's become so acceptable in society to say, yeah, I play MMO, or yeah, I play video games all the time, or something like that. It's so, so a lot more people are like, wait, video games are cool again? All right, what's new coming out that I like? Oh wait, there's a Star Wars game. What? I like the Star Wars. I'll go play that. Mm-hmm. I think well, it's becoming well, down to that. One thing that really excites me also about the Old Republic is the fact that you have that kind of soldier. I don't know what it's actually called, but you kind of look like a soldier, kind of a Mandalorian esque Boba Fett trooper. kind of thing. Yeah, kind of. And my favorite Star Wars game of all time was Republic Commando. So if I can roll be a clone, around basically, right? With something like if I could be a clone. Yeah. Well, well, you wouldn't be a clone. You'd be a Republic if, soldier. I don't know, but if I could do something like that again, like in Republic Commando or you know whatever. Hey, that would so be So basically, fun, you want to aspire to be fodder. Well, there there so, are. <laughs> hey, that that commercial a couple of years ago from E3, you see a a, a, a Republic soldier taking hey, on that's Sith. What, so that's what got yeah. me uh, interested in the game was seeing that you know that standard Joe fighting you know the dude with the lightsaber. Yeah, but how, how does a Jedi or a Sith ever lose a battle to a normal human? Because <laughs> more easily because. They're, they have different tactics, and they're trained to be able to fight those people. Yeah, I mean, because I mean, this is at a time where Sith and Jedi were very numerous, and they were massive. You know, it was a oh, galactic war, and they can't make it so Sith could just easily solve. Yeah, I mean, I know they they, they balance it out, but mm-hmm. I'd be like, okay, four. And there are going to be um, different troopers that are like NPCs that are going to be easy, somewhat easier to kill and things like that. But you're you're pretty Mob much like a commander, weird. your commando. If you're a trooper in this one, it's gonna be weird having mobs that are like, you know, humans or or whatever the Mandalorian or whatever. You know, it's, it's gonna be kind of weird because you know it's like it's not like in WoW where you're farming pigs. It's like let's go farm people. <laughs> <You know? laughs> kill that boar, right? So I mean, it's it's interesting. Um, it's gonna be a lot of fun to test out and play. Um, yeah. As it comes out, when it comes out, because let's face it. When a new MMO comes out and everybody's new to it, it is fascinating because no one knows exactly yeah. what to do. Everyone's online reading, online watching the tutorial videos that someone else tried to put up and guessing on how to mm-hmm. do things. And it's just it's so fascinating because if you're one of the first people to do to beat a specific zone, dungeon, uh, to get to the max level first or something like that, it's you You're feel like, like a, a sense of accomplishment, somewhat. Yeah. So it's, yep. it's blazing great. trails. So, is there anything else coming out this year? Um, there's one other game that's coming out, and um, if you've known um, NCSoft products, you'll uh, definitely 
if you like NC Soft products from Korea, then you'll definitely want to look into this. It's Terra. Uh, it's Terra Online. Um, it, there's this whole scandal between NC Soft and some of the developers, and uh, it's basically it's coming out from a company called uh, N Mass Entertainment, Blue Hole and Blue Hole Studios, which is um, a company uh, created by some developers from NC Soft. They supposedly I don't know if this confirmed or what the final jurisdiction of it is, but basically this uh, developers from uh, NC Soft left. They took their game with them, and they um, destroyed the copy NCSoft had, and they made it into Terra Online their own game. That now that game looks pretty cool. This game it looks incredible. Um, it, there's a lot of devoted fans, especially people that played uh, Lineage and Lineage Two, that are just waiting for this game to come out. And I think it's interesting that Terra Online is coming out, Star Wars: Old Republic, and then uh, Blizzard. So just to keep up in the race, they rushed their um, 4.3 expansion, which I'm looking forward to as well, mm -hmm. um, that's supposed to come out before all these. Um, so all three of these big things are happening like just about within a month of each other. Mm -hmm. I think so, Terra might And, might and when it good. comes to, to MMOs, the thing about an MMO is it's very hard to be a fan of more than one MMO at a time. You can be a fan of it, but you just can't be... I mean, how many subscriptions well, are you going to yeah. pay for, and how much right. time are you going to pay Here, I'll help you make your, your choice a little easier. In Terra, you could be a little gnome, right? You have an axe the size of a giant. You can jump in the air, swing it, and you will flip over and over again. Yeah, it's it's very interesting how um, it's going to play out. It's more of a traditional type of fantasy role. Um, so it's going to have fulfilled that type of satisfaction over Star Wars The Old Republic. Um, and it's it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting how it plays out. I I imagine that Star Wars is gonna take the initial big jump, but um, Terra is gonna have its devoted fans, and of course, can we just kill Wild Warcraft please? is just gonna stick around because I'm, I'm sorry, Blizzard, be that will stay Blizzard is it. sitting on a golden throne of of MMO godliness. Mm. I mean, they they perfected the formula. They they I guess they sort of earned their their seat there. They, and, they stole uh, Nintendo's machine that just prints money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and uh, w whatever. WoW is a very well-made MMO and deserves the popularity it has. But it it's interesting to see their MMOs coming out. I think Old Republic has a better chance than Terra, if only yeah. because it offers something slightly different. Um, I mean, you know, a fantasy MMO is done. Plus, or, you've been waiting or, for Old Republic for a long time. Yeah, and Old Republic is a science fiction MMO, so it may have it may scratch that itch a little better. But ultimately, the, the game the game I'm really looking forward to is Skyrim, Halo Anniversary, Battlefield Three, Halo Anniversary especially because I've been wanting an HD remake of Halo Combat Evolved since Halo Two, so for a while now, and um, and the game looks beautiful, and I'm excited for that. And I know you're excited for that, Mr. Fish. Oh, yeah. I'm, uh, I kind of have a little uh, cycle when it comes to video games. I'll play Halo. Then I'll play something else. And then I'll play Halo. Then I'll play something else. And then I'll play Halo. And then I'll play Halo for a while. And then <laughs> I'll get something else. And, well, you kind of get it. Yeah. And... And we just uh, we just branded ourselves as Halo tards, and we'll be uh, you know, a, an I'm object of hate of, from the more sophisticated gamers. I paid the hundred and eighty dollars <laughs> so I could have a statue of Noble Team. Uh, <laughs> I, I am proud to say that it stands proudly in my secret underground <laughs> yeah, bunker. And, and I'm looking forward to Halo Four, and I might even buy the new Forza Motorsport just because you can look at a warthog. You don't, you can't even drive it, but you can look at it. And wow, that's dedication right there, man. Hey, it's well, it's also a good racing game, but it's it has a DeLorean. You can drive a DeLorean. That, Back through time itself. I'm not sure, but that would be awesome. <laughs> um, That'd be awesome if so you could drive through time an and just and get to the get to the yeah. finish line before anyone else because you could time travel. That would be that would be funny. Though the game is out, and I have yet to hear that you can do that. But if you can, it would be the best racing game ever made. And, and also the it. worst because online would DeLorean suck, would dude. <laughs> online would totally suck. People go back in time and make so yeah, your car has no wheels and stuff, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go back in time and screw the bolts on your wheel and let you crash. <laughs> 
But, uh, so yeah, I mean, lots of games coming out, a lot to look forward to, limited income to look forward to with it. Yes. So, uh, too bad you can't go to Blockbuster and rent Terra online just to try it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, too bad you can't rent it. are a little, little hard to get, but, Yeah. you know. You gotta put your faith. And generally speaking, from from my understanding, it's just better to get an MMO after it's been out for a little while, so they work out all the kinks first and then jump in. Well, I don't know about you, but I want to get. I already pre-ordered Star Wars. Old yeah, I'm pretty Lectors, sure you have yeah. Collector's Edition. Cause, so because some of us, the smart Our fans. side, ha, uh, oh, have PCs oh, that can uh, that can play things called games. Again, boot camp. <laughs> <laughs> like I I have my Mac and I love my Mac, but I also have boot camp. And Windows 7 Professional. Because so. you like fun. Well, actually, I need it more for work. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah. is I, there any other games? I can't think of anything else, so we shall wrap this up, unless somebody else can think of something in 3, 2, 1. Star oh. Wars! <laughs> <laughs> Shots! Uh... <laughs> All right, this has been Codenamed Epics, Codenamed Podcast, the weekly podcast where we talk about stuff. Uh, lots and lots of stuff. Stuff. We still need to come up with a proper name for this. Uh, so, If you have any suggestions, feel free to yeah, email us. Yeah, email us. Uh, at codenamedepic at gmail.com. Yeah. yeah. So uh, this has been Codenamed Epic's Codename Podcast. Broadcasting from our underground basement. I mean... Bunker. We're bunker, in a bunker. bunker. Yes. Bunker. We're in a bunker. Yeah. Bunker. We're not in someone's parents' basement. No, we're uh, bunker. And we're signing off.